Cover for CBC's coverage of the 75th Grey Cup game. We're moments away from kickoff, but right now the national anthem. Ladies and gentlemen, here to lead all of Canada in the singing of our national anthem is the Nylons. <laughs> said for the Edmonton Eskimos Matt Dunnigan doesn't really like to think about last year's Grey Cup game when the Edmonton Eskimos were whipped by the Hamilton Tiger Cats by a score of 39 15 Dunnigan sporting a beard he decided to let the whiskers grow in mid October following a game against the Winnipeg Blue Bombers he was determined to get to a Grey Cup game and he said the beard will come off immediately after this afternoon's contest. Joe Farragelli, a veteran CFL coach, but in his first Grey Cup game as a head coach. The Edmonton Eskimos preparing to kick off to the Toronto Argonauts to get this championship game underway. Dwight Edwards and Gil Fennedy are back for Jerry Cowrick's kick. There was some concern about Cowrick as to whether he would be able to play this afternoon. We'll tell you more about that just a little later. Dwight Edwards on the kickoff return. A reverse with Daryl Smith. And it does not work as the Argonauts have planned as Smith is tripped up at the 25-yard line by Mark Norman. An eight-yard return as Gilbert Renfro leads the Argonaut offense onto the field. Well, Renfro's been under 50% of his passes most of the season, and especially in the two playoff games. We talked about Fennerty, how important he is. Warren Hudson may be the best blocking back in the CFL. That's what Bob Obilovich says. The receivers, Jeff Smith and Gene Thomas, often ignored, so it's going to come down to Daryl Smith, and this offensive line is going to have a big day. It's tough on that Edmonton front four. Jeff Smith suffered quite a serious elbow injury in warm-up for this game. Fennerty on the first play from scrimmage. Breaks off tackle for almost 10 yards before being stopped by Junior Robinson and Don Wilson. Fennerty, a unanimous choice the other night as the Shenley Rookie of the Year. And I don't recall any Shenley winner ever before being a unanimous pick. Well, there was no doubt going in he was going to win. A unanimous, as you say, Don, very surprising. But we see what they have to do, and that's what they need. Gil Fennerty to have the ball in his hands. He makes a miss. He got almost 10. And it's just a little short of a first down, so it will be second and inches for the Argonauts. The ball just shy of the 35-yard line. Gilbert Renfro, who started the season with the Ottawa Rough Riders, early was traded to the Toronto Argonauts for Cedric Miller. He keeps, he gets the first down. Gilbert Renfro with a game of 
30 yards. Renfro missed a good portion of the season because of a knee injury, but as it moved closer to playoff time, there wasn't much doubt that he was going to be the Argos' number one man. Well, these are the guys that come after him. We say they like the four-man rush, and they got four good ones up front. The linebacking crew anchored by Bass with Schaefer and Ruck. Ruck played very well for him. In the secondary, very, very physical bunch back there. And off to Fennerty, a good hole for Fennerty. And that's why he was chosen Rookie of the Year in the Canadian Football League. Gil Fennerty ripping off a 33-yard gain. Just a draw play. You see there, 37 goes through, makes the key block on the linebacker, and Randy Ambrosi has no one to block. What a job by the Argonaut line, and now it comes down to speed. And it's a good thing Benjamin had an angle on him, or he would have been gone. What a way to start for Gil Fennedy. First and 10, the ball is at the 39 of the Eskimo. Renfro throwing deep for Smith, and he overthrows him. But Renfro had a lot of time. He received excellent protection from that Toronto offensive line. Well, that's going to be the key today because we talked in our opening, Don, and Renfro, I don't believe, is going to run very much. They're going to find him in the pocket. Second Jeff down. Smith, his receiver, you know, whatever day it was, Wednesday, I think, fell on his turf and got an eight-stitch cut in his arm, but he didn't seem to have any problem. But Renfro's got the strong arm if they give him time. Second and 10. The ball is at the 39-yard line. Goes wide to the left. Gene Thomas is split to the right. Renfro for Thomas off his fingertips, and he was being covered by Stanley Blair, runner up to Gilbert Frenady for Rookie of the Year honors. Not surprising that you go after the rookie. I believe you got to go after those young guys, but he met the test. You see the curl pattern, the ball's there. Excellent defense. That right arm comes in front, bats it away. So Lance Chomick, who has really excelled in the field goal department in the final few weeks of the season, will attempt a 46-yard field goal. He hit for six in the final game of the regular season against Winnipeg. He had six more in the semifinal win over Hamilton. This kick is wide. Henry the Gizmo Williams out of the end zone and looking for room down those sidelines, but he runs out of room. He is forced out of bounds by Gil Fennerty. But the Eskimos will get their first offensive series when we return. Let's face it. Right now, you don't care about the long life and durability of Motomaster batteries. And you don't care about guarantees and warranties of Motomaster batteries. Right now, all you care about is... from Canadian Tire. Built tough, back tough. This year, you can give the athletes and volunteers in your community the recognition they deserve. In the spirit of the Olympics, you can nominate them for a Government of Canada Celebration 88 Award. For nomination information, contact the office of your mayor or member of parliament. The Government of Canada, a proud Olympic partner. Hello? Mike, what's new? Uh, what's new is the newest Commodore Amiga. Right now it's printing a company report. Uh -huh, so you're waiting. No waiting, Andy. Amiga has multitasking. While it's printing, I'm updating a sales analysis. Oh, for routine stuff. With 3D and with over 4,000 colors, it's perfect for this sales video I'm making. Desktop video? Sure. And I can play chess at the same time. Try that on your Tandy, Andy. The new Andy. Commodore Amigas. Only Amiga makes it possible. A number of times this year we have said that Henry Gizmo William of the es Williams of the Eskimos believes these uh, CBC melon jackets to be his good luck charm. In the biggest game of the year, you'll play to any superstition. So here was Henry Gizmo Williams arriving at BC Place today, appropriately attired in the melon jacket we gave him last October and looking very sharp, I might add. Don? Well, yesterday, Scott, when we chatted with the Gizmo, he said, if I run another one back for a touchdown, I want all of your jackets. And he said, I intend to have you fellas leave here naked. <laughs> <laughs> Matt 
Dunnigan rolling out of there. Gets away from the initial pressure, but Gerald Bayless throws him to the turf at the 20-yard line. Do you remember the game Gerald Bayless had against the Saskatchewan Rough Riders back in July 4th? 13 tackles, and he earned Player of the Week honors for that performance. Well, we're going to get a look at him. We said he'll be over the center. Now, they get good containment by Sellers, number 70, and when Dunnigan pulls it down and comes back inside looking for some running room, who's there waiting on him? Number 99, the first hit along with Landry. That's what you got to do to Dunnigan. Get him on the ground. Gerald Bayless with the big play. There is an injured Toronto Argonaut. I believe it is Darnell Clash. And he is up around the 40-yard line and appears to be in considerable pain. Trainer Fred Dunbar is checking with Darnell Clash. We talked about the punt returning skills of the gizmo. Darnell Clash, when wearing the uniform of the BC Lions, was certainly Mr. Excitement here in the Dome. And he provided the Toronto Argonauts with a lot of excitement this year on that punt return team as well. Rick Ryan goes into the ball game, and Jake Vaughn moves to a halfback spot with David Daniels replacing Class in the corner. Donegan slips. He's throwing deep. It's incomplete. Ryan deflected it away. There were four Argo defenders back there. Does that ball seem to hang? Well, I think when Matt Dunnigan fell down, that's, that's a sort of a timing pattern. He wants to hit Stephen Jones in between the guy that tipped the ball and the cornerback, Reggie Pleasant. But what happened when he jumped up to throw it? Your timing is off. Watch, Matt goes out. He's just going to slip. No one close. Now when he gets up, he can't deliver the ball properly, but he wants to. He knows where it has to go. It has to go to the sidelines. And the Argonauts did what we figured they'd do, is sit real deep. With Darnell Clash on the bench, Jeff Smith is the punt return man for the Argos. He takes it at the 37-yard line, and he goes down at the 44. So that's where the Argos will scrimmage first and 10 after an excellent 52-yard kick by Jerry Cowrick and a 7-yard run back by Jeff Smith. You see that left elbow heavily bandaged as a result of eight stitches from a gash earlier this week. Steve? Don, the story on Darnell Clash is that he has a cramp in his left thigh. He had some very tight protective tape on that thigh, came over to the bench, took it off, but the pain continues for Darnell Clash. They're looking at him now. Darnell Clash will be hoping that this Toronto offensive unit can stay out there and give him an opportunity to recover. Fennerty picks up about four yards before being stopped by middle linebacker Danny Bass. Well, that's where you're going to find Bass. It's his job, control tackle to tackle. When you put a four-man rush, they know what lanes they're going to. It's up to Bass to fill them. You see Stuart Hill go from the outside. Now Bass has got to find the ball carrier and put him on the ground. You see him shuck off the block of Hudson to make the tackle. Second and six. Mentos pass incomplete. It was well over the head of Daryl Smith. On the sidelines, had Steve Benjamin been able to leap and haul that throw in, he might have gone for a touchdown. So we get another opportunity to watch Henry the Gizmo Williams perform as he'll accept this third down punt from Hank Elisic. I was just watching Daryl Smith talk to Renfro coming off the field. I think Renfro realized that it was his mistake. It was just a down and out pattern to the sideline. Don't throw it behind him and high. And that's what he, he just shook his head. Yeah, his fault. Hank Elisic. Looking for his seventh breakup ring this afternoon. Five with the Edmonton Eskimos, one with the Toronto Argonauts in 1983. The kick bounces away from Williams. He has to chase it back to the 10 yard line. And then he's hit by Willie Pless as he got to the 17. 940, the time remaining in this still scoreless opening quarter. For the Gizmo, a seven-yard return after that 52-yard kick. And Willie Pless, 5'10", 215-pound linebacker, he put a good hit on those, the Gizmo, or he had a lot of running room. Last week against the B.C. Lions, Matt Dunnigan didn't have a high percentage, but he certainly threw for a lot of yards. Those touchdown tosses to Brian Kelly and Stephen Jones early in the ballgame. 
Nelson Jones to the 20-yard line. That will be a gain of three. Make it second and seven for the Eskimos. Gerald Bayless and Dan Sellers were in on the stop. This Toronto defensive unit has improved tremendously since the midpoint of the season. The addition of people like Polka, Sellers, Landry certainly solidified that front seven. Especially when you get a guy as aggressive as Landry and then Sellers, you never know where you're going to find him. He's everywhere. Donegan is still trying to struggle but can't escape Rodney Harding. And again, that Toronto defensive crew comes through to force the Eskimos into a punting situation. What's surprising there, they really dropped those linebackers out of there. They're forcing Dunnigan to throw downfield against the zone. You see Sellers just hanging around, looking for the action. What's going to happen? He comes up, gets hold of him, and then gets help from Harding. And again, Dunnigan hits the deck. That's what you have to do. Jerry Cowrick this time will be punting to Darnell Clash, who stands at the 50-yard line of the Toronto Argonauts. And it's a good kick by Cowrick. Clash has to go back to his own 42. He slips, and he won't go any further. 8.25, the time remaining. You're watching the Grey Cup game on CBC, or Grey Cup Network. Post this time of year, you have a lot of decisions to make. Who to invite, what food to serve, and what kind of beer to buy. Well, we can solve at least one of your problems with the Miller Combo Pack. Two of the world's most popular beers in one convenient case, 12 Miller and 12 Miller Lite. So if which beer to buy is on your mind, rest easy and bring out the Miller Combo Pack. You can't do any better than that. Because the Chevrolet Celebrity has the highest resale value of any mid-size car, it not only lets you get back a lot of money, it also lets you get acquainted with a lot of new friends. Priority Post, Canada's largest and most competitive courier network has joined forces with EMS, the world's most extensive courier network. The U.S., Europe, and beyond, it's all the same network. It's all the same consistent, proven reliability. Whether you ship inside Canada or out, Priority Post, EMS, Canada's world-class courier. A couple of years ago, when he was playing for the BC Lions here at BC Play Stadium, Darnell Clash injured his knee. He's been wearing a brace on that knee ever since. He has taken the brace off and is going back into the football game. The pain has gone. Let's go back to Ron and Doug. And there's no question that the Toronto Argonauts need Darnell Clash in the lineup playing that corner position and also working on those special teams. Yeah, you need him, you know. He does a good job in the corner, but they need that guy back for punt. You know, you know he can break the game just as Gizmo. First and ten from the 42. Renfro trying to set up the screen to Fennerty, and Craig Schaefer had read that one perfectly. He had penetrated, and had Fennerty made the catch, Schaefer had him wrapped up. Man-to-man -to -man coverage is as tough to screen because you are assigned to him. At number 43, Craig Schaefer's got Fennerty. Wherever Fennerty goes, he's got to be there. So they let Stuart Hill in, try to screen, but 43's waiting on him. A reclamation project for the Edmonton Eskimos this year. Craig Schaefer, who started the season with the Ottawa Rough Riders. Second and ten, the ball at the 42. Paul Pearson takes it out of bounds, and that will be a first down Toronto. Forced out by Ron Howard. Well, it doesn't surprise you that they go to Pearson. He comes up with the big catches when they need him. And let's face it, Smith and Pearson have been the gunners. Thomas has only caught four passes, and Smith hasn't played a lot. But this is the guy that's been here before. Go to him in big games. Same pattern. Reverse angle from the other side. You see Stuart Hill trying to apply the pressure. Gilbert Renfro shows you that strong arm. Pearson got a step on Wilson. Makes a catch. Pearson in motion, first and ten from the 53, the handoff to Fennerty, and Fennerty will get about four yards. He ripped off that big 33-yarder earlier in the ballgame. 
Benedy has that quickness and that running motion that Coach Bob Obilovich refers to as causing other people to miss him. Well, a lot of times that can, you don't need a big hole that way. You put a step on a guy and go the other way. He's got excellent quickness, and he always finds a way to get upfield, and that's what they've got to do with him today. Second and six. The ball is up to 53 of the Edmonton Eskimos. No score in the ball game. Renfro with time. Can't find anybody. Now dumps it to Paul Pearson. Larry Ruck stops Pearson, but not before the Canadian slot back picks up another Toronto first down. A lot of confusion on the side of the pattern. His receivers weren't open, and they all started moving in the same direction. And Renfro turned all the way back inside. That's a tough thing to do. Throw into the middle. And he found him, and Pearson again gets him the first down. He first gained national recognition while performing here on the West Coast with the University of British Columbia Thunderbirds. Kennedy cuts it back and will pick up about four more yards before being stopped by Craig Schaefer with help from Danny Bass. What a story Kennedy has been this year. He came to the Argos from the Italian Football League. And Gil the Thrill has provided Toronto fans with a lot of entertainment. Every time I see him down there, I think of the comments where he makes it. He says all he wanted to do was survive the season. He's had his share of injuries over his college career, and he's so happy to have had a whole season behind him now, and he's playing well today. Second and six from the 39. The second time that the Argos have penetrated this deeply. That pass intended for Pearson again, and the Argos were fortunate it was not intercepted. A little bit dangerous. Craig Schaefer was standing out there when he tried to throw to Pearson. He got that big right hand up and tips it in the air, and when the ball's tipped in the air, there's more defensive people than there are offensive. The gizmo will move back behind the goalposts for this field goal attempt by Lance Chomick, his second of the game, and it will come from 46 yards up. The same length, but from the hash marks on the far side. His first field goal try came from the near side hash mark. This one is also wide. Canada has launched the Olympic Torch Relay on its remarkable odyssey across Canada. Be there to share the glory as the flame passes through your community. To celebrate this historic event, Petro Canada has released the latest addition to their Olympic Torch Relay glasses. Each purchase of a glass secures you a lasting memento of the relay and helps build a legacy for our future Olympians. Visit your participating Petro Canada dealer today. Somewhere in this room is a beautiful antique, hidden under layer upon layer of paint. Now, Black & Decker will find it with Heat & Strip, the remarkable paint stripper that works with hot air, not caustic chemicals. Heat & Strip bubbles away years of paint, less work and a lot less mess. It makes all other ways of stripping paint antique. Heat & Strip from Black & Decker. I promised myself by the time I was 30, I'd buy a place away from it all. And I said, okay, by 35. 
Well, it didn't happen. Now, instead of one, there are four of us. But we finally found a person who's going to help us get that place. Mutual agents can handle your savings, life insurance, financial planning, and investment funds. And this fund can provide you with tax-free capital gains. This doesn't hurt a bit. Mutual Life of Canada. Because it's time someone made it easier. Webster's Dictionary says the word gizmo is unknown, and the Toronto Argonauts right about now probably wish they had never heard of him. Boy, I'll say that's a great way to start it. Watch the blocks. 28 Howard gets Finnerty. Stuart Hill makes his block, and they say it's a team game. Look at the escort he's got. Number five, Stanley Blair's lining him up. Okay, he makes his block, and away goes Gizmo, and from here on, it's just a race, and Lance Chomick doesn't have a chance. The Gizmo's got too much speed. He's going to have a complete wardrobe of melon jackets at the rate he's going. Yeah, does mine go next or yours? <laughs> I think he's probably going to ask for both of them. That's the type of excitement he has been providing for football fans all across the country this season with his ability to return kicks and punts. Dwight Edwards from his own 25-yard line. He also has some speed. He had some difficulty, however, finding the opening to run through, but did get it back to the 52-yard line, a 27-yard return. Scott? Ron, I just spoke to Gizmo as he was on the bench here, and he said, uh, I told you it was the jacket. I knew it. If I wore it today, it was going to work, and it did. Well, he is convinced that the melon jackets are his good luck charm because we have been involved in almost every return for a touchdown that he has had this season. He might insist that we do all of the Edmonton Eskimo games next year. Daryl Smith makes the catch at the 39 of the Edmonton Eskimos. The Eskimos had a, a mix-up in the coverage. You could see 28 really running across the field to try to get over there with Daryl Smith. And all of a sudden, he finds the hole in the zone. You see Don Wilson. Wilson gives him a little shove. Now he's going to play the short zone in the flat. And there goes Smith right into the hole. And Ron Howard comes from the other side of the field. But he was a little late getting there. First and 10. The ball is at the 39. This is the third time in this quarter that the Argos have moved this far into Edmonton Eskimo territory. They move a little further with the reception by Gene Thomas taken out of bounds down at the 30-yard line. They have to get Gene Thomas and Jeff Smith the football. Their big receivers all year have been Daryl Smith first, Paul Pearson second. But the wide receivers, they've got to get it to them today. They're going to get single coverage, and you see Stanley Blair one-on-one. -on -one. From the reverse angle, you saw him go out of bounds, one yard short of a first down. They give it to Warren Hudson, and he does get the first down. Larry Ruck was there to make the tackle. Bob Abilovich is facing a seven-point deficit, but he has to be pleased with the way his team has moved the ball in this opening quarter. Yeah, he's got to be a little bit disappointed trailing 7 nothing. He's moved the football. His offense has done the job. A little bit nickel and dime, run it, make some first downs, try to get some points. Try two field goals, and he's trailing 7 nothing. First and 10. The ball is at the 27 of the Edmonton Eskimos. Renfro threw it over the head of Daryl Smith and Ron Howard. Had to try and reach back for an interception. And that's the second time that Renfro has thrown the ball not particularly well when looking for Daryl Smith. When he can go straight back in the pocket and set up, he's very accurate. Had he taken a look downfield, Junior Robinson was talking over here to Steve Benjamin because they turned Jeff, Lew Jeff Smith loose right up the seam. And I'm sure we're going to see that play again. Second and 10. The ball is at the 27. 2.56 remaining in this opening quarter. 7-0. The Eskimos lead it. That 112-yard kick returned by the Gizmo. Again intended for Daryl Smith. And once again, Renfro's throw is high. Well, we've seen this with him in the first game he came back against the Bombers. His throws were high, you know. And, you know, he's still only in his third game since he's come back. And he needs to play. He's got to get that throw down because he's had receivers open. Well, Obilovich, in that second-last game of the season against Winnipeg, clearly stated that 
His number one quarterback was going to be Gilbert Renfro, and Renfro has started every game since then. You hear the crowd come alive? They miss another field goal. Look who's standing back there. Tomic with his third field goal try. This time it's good. After missing twice from 46 yards out, Tomic puts it through from 34 yards away. And with 226 left in this opening quarter, it's a 7-3 ball game. The Eskimos in front. Obilovich's first head coaching experience in a Grey Cup game was in 1982, a losing effort, when he also faced the Edmonton Eskimos. But what a job he has done with the Toronto Argonauts since taking over as head coach, the winningest coach in Toronto Argonaut history. Well, there are football fans here from all parts of Canada. Getting here was only half the fun for some because with the problems... In air travel these days, returning home might be a little more difficult for some. The party may last a little bit longer than anticipated. Hank Elisic will be handling the kickoff tour for the Toronto Argonauts. Yes, some folks <laughs> might not be coming back until Christmas. Stephen Jones and the Gizmo are back for this Ankylistic kickoff. They kick it away from the gizmo, but some claim that Jones is even faster. However, he can't escape Doug Landry, who is downfield, restricting the return to 15 yards after a 65 yard kickoff. So far, Toronto's offensive line has done a pretty good job of supplying protection for Gilbert Renfro, while the Toronto Argonauts have been forcing Matt Dunnigan out of there. Well, that's what makes Obilovich's quote so right for this football game. You've got to protect that quarterback because if he can't operate, you can't win. Penalty fly goes down as Brian Kelly makes the catch. And then Kelly is forced out of bounds by Willie Pless. But there was a penalty flag at the line of scrimmage. Procedure, Edmonton number 70. Brian Kelly is conferring there with John Ireland, the referee, as to how he erred in lining up. And he may have been across the line of scrimmage when he lined up. You know, what I thought was funny. You know, I don't know which guy it was, but it, the flag went immediately, and it was Brian Kelly. You know, those wide receivers, it's tough to hear in here, so they're going to have to turn and look in at the football as he's doing. And you see right here, he knew he jumped, and that's all it takes. First and 15 now for the Eskimos. They lead it by a score of 7-3, quickly inside to Rick House, and he will have a gain of about 11. Don Moan puts him down on the turf. The, Eskim the Eskimos and Argonauts are a little bit different in the way they play offense. We talk about the wide receivers of Kelly and Jones. You must take away from Edmonton. Therefore, they are going to go to House and Sincar, and there are going to be some big plays made inside. He plans on returning to Winnipeg in the offseason and attending the University of Manitoba to get his teaching certificate. We're into the final minute of this opening quarter. Well, there's a penalty flag on the play. Violation. A time count. Number 16. Violation against the Edmonton Eskimos. You think noise is a problem for Dunnigan and the Eskimos? Noise is a little bit of a problem, plus the style of defense Toronto plays. If you watch them before the ball snap, they're moving all over the place. Sellers, you, they look for Sellers, and sometimes he's in the middle, sometimes he's to the right, he goes to the left, and... Wherever he lines up, the Eskimos will have a plan of attack for where he is, but he's never there. Well, that was one of Matt Dunnigan's concerns yesterday when we talked with him, trying to determine just where Sellers would be when they lined up. And there's Willie Plus. There's another penalty flag on the play. It was downfield in the vicinity of the 40-yard line. 
Don Ireland will explain it for us. Holding. Sauna number 13. First down. Halfback David Daniels was guilty of the holding call, which wipes out a solid defensive effort by Willie Plass, who came flying through to drop Matt Dunnigan. Yeah, it looked like Dunnigan was going to escape back to his right, and all of a sudden, Willie Pless showed you he might be 215 pounds, but he's got great quickness. The Argonauts missed him earlier in the season when he was out with an injury. Ryan Kelly working against Pless. He gets away from him. A gain of 20 yards for Brian Kelly. Well, Matt Dunnigan said he was going to throw the ball quick because if he throws it quick, he doesn't need as much blocking. And when they come at him with a blitz like that, that's an ideal call. And as we said in our opening, Brian Kelly is tough one-on-one. -on -one. You can't ask Darnell Flash to handle him. Kelly rewriting the CFL pass receiving record statistics this year. First and 10 as Dunnigan goes to the outside, being chased by Plus. And forced out of bounds by Plus and Glenn Calca. Doug Landry also came flying into the fray over on the far side. Going over top of uh, quarterback Matt Dunnigan off the final play of the opening quarter. And now we get the official signal from the field. And you're watching the Grey Cup game on CBC Television, your Grey Cup network, coast to coast. Around here, they know my name. Ever through the good times, I was looking for more. Around here, it's just the name of the game. Working, living, laughing, that's what good friends are for. Human zooms back and forth they go, trying to take just the pictures they want. Now Pentax puts an end to the human zoom, introducing the Zoom 70, the world's only fully automatic camera with a built-in power zoom lens. All you have to move is your thumb, so you can get this, 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 and this. Put an end to the human zoom. Get the new Pentax Zoom 70 and get the pictures you want. Set the wheels in motion. We keep them running strong. The values you can count on. Right here where we belong. When it comes to this town. When it comes to this town. Your GM. Dealers right here for you. Your GM. Dealers right here for you. Joe Farragelli, a rookie head coach in a Grey Cup game with his team in front thanks to the big play, the 112-yard missed field goal return by Henry the Gizmo Williams. Bob Abilovich now a little concerned to start this second quarter in whether or not his troops can contain the scrambling of Matt Dunnigan. Well, that's the key. Uh, that defense has played well. They played well the last half of the season, and they've played extremely well in a playoff. But this is their test. Matt Dunnigan. Rick House makes the catch for a first down at the 35-yard line. Statistically, in the first quarter, it was all Toronto. Three field goal attempts by... Lance Chomick, he was good on only one, and of course the big play of that opening quarter, that 112-yard return by Henry the Gizmo Williams. <laughs> Doug Landry gets to a former collegiate teammate, Matt Dunnigan, for the first sack of the afternoon, back at the 41-yard line. 
Watch how quick he comes between that center and guard. Hey, he is in the backfield before Dunnigan has a chance to plant. You cannot allow him to run free like that, and that's what's made their defense so tough is the quickness that they have. They were teammates at Louisiana Tech. Matt Dunnigan said he always knew when Doug Landry was in the dorm. Well, I think you know when he's on the field. I mean, he is not shy. Second and 16, back at the 40-yard line. Donegan throws the screen to Milson Jones. And Landry comes flying through with help from Dave Daniels to make the tackle at the 29-yard line. No, they'll spot it at the 27. Zone defense. You see Landry dropping out at the top. They all drop deep. Dunnigan sets the screen well. There they go. Connup and Stevenson in front of him. He needed one more block to get that first and ten. It will be third and three. And the Edmonton Eskimos send their field goal unit out. And there is another injured Toronto Argonaut. It appears to be Doug Landry. And Landry may have suffered an arm injury when he came flying through there to try and bring down Milson Jones. Usually when you see that arm hanging and dangling from the shoulder like that, not move much, it's a shoulder. He must have hit somebody pretty good with it. He, they have to hope he's back because he is the inspirational leader out there. He was the final piece of the puzzle, many feel, in putting together that solid front seven that the Toronto Argonauts now have. 34-yard field goal attempt by Jerry Cowan. It's good. So the Edmonton Eskimos have a seven-point lead with 12.56 still to play in the first half. It's here. Petro-Canada has launched the Olympic Torch Relay on its remarkable odyssey across Canada. Be there to share the glory as the flame passes through your community. To celebrate this historic event, Petro-Canada has released the latest addition to their Olympic torch relay glasses. Each purchase of a glass secures you a lasting memento of the relay and helps build a legacy for our future Olympians. Visit your participating Petro-Canada dealer today. Do you like going for a burger? Your choice of toppings. Char broil. Now how does that sound? Yeah. The Eskimos were concerned about kicker Jerry Cowrie coming into this game. He sprained his ankle in last week's Western final. Sprained ankles don't usually heal in a week, but adrenaline has done the trick for Cowrie. Let's go to Steve. Scott, the story here at the Argos bench, the injury to Landry. The tank took a shot that penetrated the armor on the right shoulder. The doctors have looked at it and said, it's okay. Well, if it's at all possible, Landry will be back out there. He is a tough competitor and one who has been enjoying the week of festivity leading up to the Grey Cup game. Dwight Edwards still on his feet on the sidelines and finally knocked down by Brian Warren. A 27-yard run back by Dwight Edwards after that 55-yard kickoff. And basically that's what Dwight Edwards is doing now for the Toronto Argonauts working on those special teams. Yeah he feels in a wide receiver but we're following Brian Warren the linebacker who plays rush in sometime. That's a good hit when you get him on the sideline he can't know where to go lower the boom on him and that's what Warren did. First and ten for the Argos they are at their own 48 yard line they trail by seven. Well 35 remaining in the half the pitch to Gil Penerty. And the Eskimos close it off as 
Larry Ruck was there to help string it out. Well, that's what you do with any play trying to go wide. You don't want them to get, get up there and quit the corner turn. It's up to those guys. String it out, get those secondary people involved. Larry Ruck's there to make the tackle. The ball is at the 49-yard line. Bill Fennerty started the game so strongly with a couple of big runs for the Argos. But that Eskimo defensive unit has adjusted and has contained them since then. Renfro throwing deep down the sideline. Fennerty will go. We talked about if Renfro could get back and get set in the pocket with time to throw. Watch him. He had time. Just lays it on. And the speed, he's on a linebacker. You can't ask Larry Ruck to run with Gil Finnerty, and you see the result. A touchdown. Well executed play. 61 yards for Gil Finnerty. We said that the Eskimos had adjusted to stopping his rushing, but they were unable to control Fennerty on that 61-yard pass for a touchdown, and Lance Chomick has an opportunity to put the Argos back on equal terms, which he does. It's been a storybook week for Gil Fennerty. A Shenley Award as the country's outstanding rookie, and now as we look from the reverse angle, this 61-yard touchdown to put the Argos back on even terms. Well, you saw Brentro able to get those feet set. Right on the money. Finnerty went out as a wide receiver, just runs straight down the field on Larry Ruck. And as you say, a storybook week for him. He'd love to finish it off in style. Well, so far, this 1987 Grey Cup game has been everything many anticipated it would be. Individual talents coming to the fore. Those of Gil Finnerty, Henry the Gizmo Williams, Tank Landry, Danny Bass, many others. Well, we talked about Stuart Hill. He has to work on Calvin Prunster. Prunster's got to just get him to the outside. He knows the quarterback will step up. That's the ideal block for the tackle. Keep him outside. Well, the last time they played a Grey Cup game here under the dome, the Toronto Argonauts celebrated with a victory over the BC Lions in 1983. I'd like to duplicate that performance in 1987 and claim the Edmonton Eskimos as their victims. The score is tied at 10 as the Toronto Argonauts prepare to kick off. Hank Alisic looking after that assignment. Stephen Jones and the Gizmo are back for the kickoff. Jones will return it. He is brought down at the 31-yard line and after the tackle, some extra pushing and shoving. Blaine Schmidt and David Daniels were there to stop Stephen Jones, a 17-yard run back after a 61-yard kickoff. We saw that time of possession, 4 minutes and 28 seconds for the Eskimos. Once again, they have not solved this Toronto defense yet. Well, last week we said in that Western final over B.C., Matt Dunningham did not have a high percentage, but he wasn't bad for distance. I think he'd like to reverse the statistics that he possesses this afternoon. He's four out of five, but doesn't have big yardage. Chris Skinner makes the catch, and Don Moon is right there to bring him down. Don Moon is another who has a big following at the game this afternoon. He, too, a UBC product. Many consider him one of the most underrated linebackers in the entire country. Well, he does his job there. Just sit back, sit back, and allow Dunnigan to throw it underneath and react on the football and make the tackle. That's what he did. The only problem was he only he gave five yards up. But you can't take everything away. Second and five. The ball is at the 36. Little swing pass coming out of the backfield. Chris Skinner will get the first down up to the 46-yard line, stopped by Willie Plus and Reggie Pleasant. The key block was made by number 27, Marco Sincar, on that quick screen to the outside. If we get a chance, if we can see 27, will come to the inside on the left of the screen, and he will make the block on the linebacker right there to allow 
Blanchard to get outside, but Marco Sincar come in and knocked off Landry. First and ten, the ball is at the 46, 10-29, remaining in the half, the score tied at 10. Nelson Jones will get five more. Up to his own 51-yard line, and again, Willie Plass, who seems to be everywhere this afternoon, is there to make the tackle. Well, you know, a lot of times when you have a defense like the Argonauts have that has so much quickness and move the people around, if you run right at them, you have a better chance of gaining yardage. Dunnigan facing another second and five. Hauls it down, he'll run it. To the 45 of the Toronto Argonauts, and that's something Dunnigan does so well. Well, that's what we talked about in the opening, Don. If you keep him contained from the outside, you may open up a seam inside, and he doesn't find anyone open. But look at the big hole that he's, he's able to get through. Now he's going to pick up some blocks downfield. Didn't get too many of them, but he got the first down. First and 10 from the 45. It is intercepted by Darnell Class, intended for Rick House. 9-13 is the time remaining in the first half. The Argos will have the ball when we come back. Priority Post, Canada's largest and most competitive courier network, has joined forces with EMS, the world's most extensive courier network. The U.S., Europe, and beyond. It's all the same network. It's all the same consistent, proven reliability. Whether you ship inside Canada or out, Priority Post, EMS, Canada's world-class courier. Whatever your financial goals are, the life insurance industry has the products to help you achieve them. We offer RRSPs and a wide choice of savings and retirement income plans. We can help you build for the future and provide guaranteed protection for you and your family. A sound, secure financial plan can help you achieve tomorrow's goals without sacrificing your enjoyment of today. Talk to your life insurance agent about the best way to achieve financial security. It is a true renaissance. Angles yielding to curves. New ideas formed and perfected into movement. Introducing the new Toyota Corolla. Redesigned and reborn. Respecting your insistence on economy while understanding your desire for luxury. The 1988 Toyota Corolla. Once you experience it, there is no turning back. Ryan Kelly goes down the sidelines to open the area for House, but what's the ball overthrown? Just a little, but that's all it takes. And Darnell Clash, being as quick as he has, he out jumps him, brings it down, and the Argonauts have the ball again. The first turnover of the afternoon. The Toronto Argonauts have the ball at their own 32-yard line following the Darnell Clash interception. Daryl Smith seemed to be a little confused, and there's movement at the line of scrimmage. John Mandarich advanced prior to the ball being snapped. Procedure or offside will let the officials sort it out. And it was John Mandarich who moved across that line of scrimmage prior to the ball being snapped. So it is first and five for Toronto. The ball is up at the 37-yard line. 8.53 is the time remaining in this first half. 10-10 the score. Warren Hudson looking for the first down. He appears to have it. Just a trap. Dan Peroni comes from his left guard position across and makes the trap on James Zachary, and that opens up a hole for number 37, Hudson. Gilbert Renfro doesn't have the experience of a Matt Dunnigan, but he has the confidence of his head coach, Bob Obilovich. 
He had some high praise for Gilbert Renfrew earlier this week. He said he felt he has the potential to be another Warren Moon. Well, that's not bad. Sideline pattern for Jeff Smith, and he makes the catch close to another first down. On the shoes of Darnell Clash, a little slogan, and I'm not sure the significance. Right about now, I think there are some Eskimo fans who might not be particularly fond of Darnell Clash following that interception. Well, he's one of the characters in the league, and I think he's good for the league. You know, it's just some do, some don't. If you like him, and I like him, I like the way he plays football. Second down, Gil Fennerty gets the first down. He has the Argo touchdown on that 61-yard pass from Gilbert Renfro, Danny Bass, and Larry Rocker there to make the tackle. You know, this Toronto offensive line did an outstanding job in the Eastern Division final against the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. It looks as though they picked up right where they left off in Winnipeg. Well, that's what you got to do. You know, and Bob Obilovich has said this is the best offensive line that he has had since he's been with the Toronto Argonauts. And, you know, he won a great cup a few years ago. And I think Peroni and Kunst and Beckstead, they were there, but now they're solid. He's really impressed with their play. Gene Thomas goes wide to the right. Renfro looking to the right, and underneath he picks off Paul Pearson. Thomas going down the sidelines, cleared the area, and Pearson came over to make the catch. They put those three receivers out here to the right, and Pearson's the third one in. He just goes out in the flat, and you saw one receiver clear. There goes the other one, and then Pearson finds the open hole. Renfrew reads it properly out to the sideline to Pearson. First and ten. The ball is at the 39 of the Edmonton Eskimos. 6.55 remaining in the half. Draw play with Fennerty. Craig Schaefer brought him down, but not before he picked up another Toronto first down. Well, we said in the opening, if the Argonauts are going to move the football, they've got to get it in Fennerty's hands, whether it's running or passing. He's had a pretty good day. Look at the job of blocking. Then it's just uh, what allow him to do what he does best, and that's run. Schaefer's the last man that had a shot at it. Good lead block on that run by Fennerty by Warren Hudson. And it is first and ten Toronto, the ball at the 28 of the Eskimos. Renfro couldn't find a receiver, tried to run, but Stuart Hill was having none of that. Stuart Hill, the Eskimos rush in, who has enjoyed a brilliant season. Not talking to the media this week, a little miffed that he didn't get a Shenley nomination or All-Star recognition. Well, he play, he's played well in their two playoff games. Renfro didn't like what he sees. He tries to step back up inside. So you should be there. Hill didn't get to the outside. He didn't get any penetration, but he was there to make the tackle if he stepped up. Back at the 31-yard line, it is second and 12 for the Toronto Argonauts. Renfro to Thomas down at the 10. The thing you have to be impressed about is the amount of time that Renfro had to throw that football. Gene Thomas went down from the right side and broke inside. We're going to get a look at it. You see Stanley Blair got him man to man, and he's inside, and he makes the catch. We know they're going to get one-on-one -on -one coverage outside because they're so concerned with Smith and Pearson. But if you can keep finding him like that, you got everything going. A late addition to the Argo lineup from the University of the Pacific. And now it is Gilbert Rent, uh, Fennerty fighting inside the five-yard line. And it will be second and four from the four. Right behind Ambrosi, Prunster, and Beckstad. There goes Fennerty. 69, Dan Peroni's going to try to make the cutoff block to allow him to get all the yardage he can get. But they're getting the job done in pass protection, and they're moving the, uh, the defensive line around. Well, that's something the Argos have to be happy about, the way they have moved the ball in this first half. Second and four, Fennerty again, touchdown!
16. The time remaining in this first half as Gil Fennerty gets his second touchdown. The first on the 61-yard pass reception. The second on this four-yard run. Well, you see him start to the left behind Schultz and Peroni, but he cuts all the way back behind Ambrosi and Prunster. But nevertheless, again, they push that defensive line around, and that's tough to do. Lance Chomick with the point after. And the Toronto Argonauts, for the first time this afternoon, have the lead. You're watching the Grey Cup on CBC Television, your Grey Cup network, coast to coast. Perfect day for it. Yep. Fifty years ago, Air Canada started out with one small plane and one huge country. The obstacles that faced our pioneers were as imposing as the land itself. stretched our knowledge, our wings, and our imagination. Today, Air Canada has earned its reputation as a world-class airline. With our partners, we serve more than 150 cities across Canada and around the world. But that hasn't made us complacent. We'll still be reaching for the moon and the stars tomorrow. And we invite all Canadians of vision to join us. Welcome back to BC Play Stadium in Vancouver. Coming up at halftime, anniversary celebrations, the 75th year of the Grey Cup. We'll have our head coaches, Larry Donovan and Mike uh, Riley. Don and Ron with the first half analysis, and I'll speak with our federal sports minister, Otto Jelinek. I tell you, Don Whitman, a good football game so far here today. A very entertaining football game indeed, Brian. And you know, you talked about Grey Cup recollections of previous years and the fact that this is a 75th anniversary. That very first game, tickets range from 25 cents to a buck and a quarter. Quite a bit of difference here today, but this is what they came to see. They want to see the ball in the end zone, and Finnerty seems to be getting it done for them today. Two touchdowns for Gill the Thrill. That last touchdown, the result of a turnover. The interception by Darnell Clash. And the Argonauts took advantage and drove it the length of the field for the major score. Tom Richards on the kickoff return. Stopped at the 35-yard line by Warren Hudson. 12-yard return after that 52-yard kickoff. And I think right now Matt Dunnigan has to be just a little concerned with the Eskimo inability to move the football to put together any sustained drives. Well, you said it last week against the BC Lions. He threw for big yardage, long, long passes. Today, the Argonauts are not going to allow him to do that, so he's got to put some drives together. So far, he hasn't done it, and this is the name of the game for the Eskimos. Figure it out. Rick House is the intended receiver. Darnell Clash is heading for the end zone, but they rule an incomplete pass. Well, not all of our Grey Cup viewers today are watching on the North American continent. We'd like to say hello to those viewers at the Canadian Forces Station in Bermuda who are watching live via satellite. They stage their own Grey Cup Day celebration with a dance, a mini Grey Cup game, and conclude the day by watching the game via satellite. And we say hello from BC Place, the site of the 1987 Grey Cup game. Donegan with time, and he picks up Rick House. He slips, but he gets the first down. Ron, you talked earlier about the bend but don't break defensive philosophy of the Toronto Argonauts. Perhaps you could expound on that. Well, you got a good example of it there. The Argonauts were sitting so deep 
that Dunnigan has a lot of time to throw the football, but the Argonauts are just sitting back there. He's looking downfield, looking, finally has to come off. They get those linebackers 15 yards deep. You've got to throw in front of it. And that's why Dunnigan has to be content with a ball control offense today. 3.07, the time remaining till the half. 17-10 is the score. Toronto in front. Dunnigan flips it out to Chris Skinner. Excellent running by the Bishop's product to get a first down. Stopped by the safety, Jake Vaughn. 2.50 is the time remaining in the first half. <laughs> Hockey fans could never agree on who had the hardest shot, Bobby Hall or me. Bobby Hall, Eddie. Or, or who was a better skater, me or Gordy Howe? It was Gordy. But one thing we can all agree on is Miller Lite. Because we know light tastes great. Light tastes less belly. Tastes great. Tastes less belly. Oh, I'm going to keep my nose out of this one. <laughs> Miller Lite, now with the BBO, the bottom bottle opener. It's here. Petro-Canada has launched the Olympic Torch Relay on its remarkable odyssey across Canada. Be there to share the glory as the flame passes through your community. To celebrate this historic event, Petro-Canada has released the latest addition to their Olympic Torch Relay glasses. Each purchase of a glass secures you a lasting memento of the relay and helps build a legacy for our future Olympians. Visit your participating Petro-Canada dealer today. The human zooms back and forth they go, trying to take just the pictures they want. Now Pentax puts an end to the human zoom, introducing the Zoom 70, the world's only fully automatic camera with a built-in power zoom lens. All you have to move is your thumb, so you can get this, 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 and this. Put an end to the human zoom. Get the new Pentax Zoom 70 and get the pictures you want. Following the game, we will be selecting MVPs in three categories. Offense, defense, and outstanding Canadian. Canada Lease, a Canadian public company providing leadership in the world of high technology and capital equipment leasing. Canada Lease makes your money work better for you. First and ten. The Eskimos at the Toronto 47-yard line. The Eskimos with four Canadian running backs, and they rotate them. Milton Jones, Chris Skinner, Blake Marshall, and Chris Johnstone. Pass knocked down right at the line of scrimmage by Rodney Harding. Gerald Bayless may have forced Dunnigan to throw sooner than he wanted to, and that combination of Bayless and Harding prevented the Eskimos from completing the pass. Well, the Eskimos always like to bring that inside receiver to the inside quick, and then they send Milson Jones this time in the flat, but there it is. Just get up high and knock it down. You see Sellers that time running with the back. And you see the stunt that takes Harding right out into the passing lane. Coming down inside is Bayless. Going outside is Harding. He's the guy that bats it down. Second and 10. Dunnigan loses the football. Doug Landry. He'll score. football player he is. He's going to be around the football and when it bounces up he's waiting on it. Dunnigan the hit on Dunnigan and the ball drops out and Landry's right on the spot. Pretty good running back. And he outran Hector Pache as he headed for the end zone and scores a big touchdown for the Toronto Argonauts with 220 remaining and the point after is added by Lance Tronick. 
So after twice facing a seven-point deficit earlier in the ball game, the Argos now lead by 14. How do you like the stripes on the side of the head of Doug Landry? He and Darnell Class decided to uh, do a little breakup celebrating and wear a bit of identification of their own. He initially was going to throw the ball up into the stands and didn't quite get there. And now Landry keeps it as a souvenir. <laughs> yeah, I, I kind of think you keep those as souvenirs. You know, I talked to him the other day here about what kind of season and, you know, looking back to August, if he ever expected to be in a great cup game, he wasn't even on a roster. And he said it's everything that he could ask. Cameron and Dr. Cherry both conferring with Matt Dunnigan so perhaps Dunnigan was injured on that hit from Glenn Culkin. Well I think he'll have to sit out. Damon Allen's got his helmet on and been warmed up. When the doctors are talking to you on the bench that, that soon and you got to go in the game right away I don't think he's ready. Tom Richards on the kickoff return out to the 40 yard line no further. Lane Schmidt was there along with Bruce Elliott. Duncan has time, but we say that Argonaut defensive secondary, they just are everywhere, and when that ball bounces loose, you know, sooner or later, one of those linemen are going to get loose. Kulka got there, and he, when he we reached in with that right hand, he batted it out, and when you, you see the result, Landry's very happy, the Eskimos are sad, and Damon Allen plays quarterback. Damon Allen at quarterback for the Edmonton Eskimos with 2.13 remaining in the half. He was looking for Milson Jones being covered by Rodney Harding. <laughs> well, we have talked many times about the improvement in this Toronto football club defensively, the front four and the linebacking crew. There really is no comparison this Toronto team from the midpoint of the season to what we see today. None. And look at this play right here. The momentum has definitely come to the Argonaut side of the field. Harding was out there waiting on that pass. Harding played well for them all year, but when they got called to Landry and Sellers, they've just taken off. Damon Allen won't get a chance to throw as Kulka made the first contract and Sellers finished the job. You know, the bad thing here, Don, if you're an Eskimo fan, is Tom Richards was wide open out at the sideline, but Damon Allen never could get a chance to throw the football. You see, Kalka gets, beats his man. Sellers jumps over. Now, Kalka goes by, but he got him off balance enough to where Sellers can finish the job. And as I said, if he'd had just a second, Richards is wide open at the first and ten marker, but no chance. Darnell Glass, the lone man back with his third down kick by Jerry Carrick. And he is taken out of bounds at the 47-yard line by Blake Marshall. Four yards on the return. That's the camera on the other side of BC Play Stadium that has been providing those reverse angle pictures. And on many of the replays that we have had as a result of the reverse angle, we've been able to determine just why a ball was fumbled or why an interception was made. A CBC exclusive we hope you've enjoyed during the course of this 1987 season. Screen pass to Tony Johns and Danny Bass read that one perfectly. Well, they had it set well. Well, they got the rush that they wanted. They got the ball to the receiver, but Danny Bass sitting back there just back about four or five yards saw it coming and is right there to make the tackle. All right, you see Bass number 30. Now he's looking around. He's seeing something. All right, he finds him. Seek and destroy. That's what that middle linebacker was supposed to do, and he did it. Pass getting set on second and ten. He drops back to defend. The throw goes deep to Gene Thomas. Incomplete. Stanley Blair was defending against Thomas. Scott. 
if the Eskimos are going to score any offensive points in the time left in the first half. They'll be engineered by Damon Allen. The Eskimo medical staff does not want Matt Dunnigan to return for any of the first half. He banged his head on the turf when hit by Glenn Kolka. They will re-examine him at halftime. Well, Dunnigan really took a blow there from Kolka as the 6'3", 250-pounder, and bringing him down landed right on top of him. Well, I know that, that's a tough, tough break because when that field is hard and it's artificial turf, there's not much give. Your head hits the ground. You're dazed for a while. Very wise move. Keep them out. Only the second part of the game by Hank Olsen gets blocked by Stanley Blair. Well, we've had a little bit of everything. We see Alyssic bobble the snap, and when you bobble the snap, this can happen. Watch. A little bit low, but it's playable. But as he goes up, look at Blair lay out. I mean, he almost got the foot. That's good defense. He had a mission. He's coming from the outside. Now, normally, the ball should be gone, so you don't worry about him. But when you bobble it, it throws the timing off. So now it's a first and ten for the Eskimos from the 39 of the Argos. Stanley Blair blocking that punting attempt by Elisic, and Damon Allen completes it to Milson Jones for a first down and more. One twelve is the time remaining in the first half. 24-10 the score. The Toronto Argonauts in front. But the Eskimos would love to put it in the end zone before going to the dressing room. Well, he looks downfield, finally decides to come to the short man, and then Milton Jones just runs it back inside. They still got a minute left, a lot of time for Damon Allen. First and ten from the 22, drop play with Milton Jones to the five. game has had absolutely everything you would want in a championship contest. Well, Doug Landry ran out of the middle. He started with the backs when they went in motion, and Milton Jones went right behind his right guard, Leo Blanchard and Trevor Bowles, and he brings it down to the six, 40 seconds. First and goal from the six-yard line, the clock running. Every time the ball is turned over, they put it in the end zone. You see Sincar come right in behind Doug Landry and in front of Jake Bond, and he puts it in the end zone with 28 seconds left. Good, good blocking up front by the Eskimos. And once Sincar went behind Landry, it was open. Jerry Cowher gets the point after to bring the Eskimos within seven. Well, this has been quite a spectacle here at BC Place Stadium. 41 points in the first half, 28 seconds remaining. Are you a little surprised? I am. I am in view of the solid defensive efforts of both teams in their respective semifinals, East and West, and in the final, East and West. The lone touchdown that the Toronto Argonauts gave up was as the result of a block kick against Hamilton. The lone touchdown that the Edmonton Eskimos gave up was an interception return against Calgary. Well, you see Allen looking. You see Landry looking to his left. There goes Sinkar right into the open area. But I was predicting a score somewhere in the 20s. Well, we've already gone by that. But I, I just can't believe it. The defenses are very, very sound. I thought coming into today's game, the question mark was the Toronto Argonaut offense. They've been a little inconsistent. But today, they've been right on target. And the uh, Eskimos have had their problems offensively. Marco Sincar's touchdown, bringing the Eskimos within seven with 28 seconds remaining in the first half. And this crowd at BC Play Stadium has certainly been entertained this afternoon, and we hope you've enjoyed the action wherever you're looking in across the CBC Television Network, your Grey Cup Network from coast to coast. Dwight Edwards again, starting out from the 20-yard line. Stop at the 30. 
Junior Robinson and Craig Schaefer were there to make the tackle. And what has also been interesting through the first half of this game, there have not been many penalty fights. That's good. You know, it's ideal when you let the players decide it on the field. You know, they're not going to take any cheap shots and things like that today. This is for everything that you've worked for since the first day of camp. And it takes good, hard, solid football. And the referees don't have to worry about it. First and ten. The ball is up to 31-yard line. Fennerty picks up about two yards. And that takes the clock down to 19 seconds. Dan Mass, the middle linebacker, made the tackle. That late touchdown should give the Edmonton Eskimos a big lift heading into the dressing room. A lot of momentum for him as a football club, but a lot of confidence building for Damon Allen, who came off the bench and in the first series moves the football and puts it in the end zone and brings him within seven. So now he's into the football game. The Eskimos have scored, should make a great final 30 minutes. This should be the final play of the half. Fennerty cuts back inside. And he is brought down by Craig Schaefer. And time has run out on the scoreboard clock. And there's the signal from the field. And what a half of football it has been in this 1987 Grey Cup game with the Argos leading by seven. Everybody has their own reasons for drinking responsibly. For taking a cab or a bus out so there's no need to make a decision later. For realizing that a drink has a right time and a right place. And remembering that there are people who depend on them. Everybody has their own reasons. Think about yours. A few years ago, I would love to have gotten my hands on this, the world's most advanced TV system from Philips. A great picture plus this, the Philips Total Remote. I can control a VCR, the cable converter, and every feature and function of my TV with on-screen display, all from right here. The new Philips Total Remote. It's so advanced, it's easy to keep my hands off. And the warden likes that. refusal to let you pay the ransom is unacceptable to us. John Creasy is a man on a mission. They took the only thing in life that mattered to him, and now he wants her back with a vengeance, starring Scott Glenn. They want him to pay for the girl. He wants them to pay with their lives. Man on Fire. Starts Friday at select theaters. Carl Hilsinger, former CFL All-Star who lost both legs in a car accident. Now he is sports consultant for the War Amps Child Amputee Program. The War Amps provide sports limbs and myoelectric arms for children like the ones Joshua Black wears. He was born missing his hands and feet. Hello, Josh. You ready to go skiing? Yes. Through the Play Safe program, children are warned about dangers in their play environment. Safety is no accident, so play safe. This message is brought to you by the War Amps and the Canadian Football League. The CFL on CBC. Brought to you by Carling O'Keefe Brewery. The CFL, it's the game around here. Petro Canada Dealers and Agents. Our energy is Canada. And by Air Canada, celebrating 50 years of serving Canadians at home and around the world. time of the 75th Grey Cup game at BC Place in Vancouver and the Argonauts lead the Eskimos 24-17. We are joined by our game day coaches Mike Riley of the Bombers and Larry Dunham of the BC Lions. Mike if you're coaching the Eskimos are you in the locker room now saying hey for the most part of the first half we did not figure out the Argonaut defense. Well I think uh, Scott really you go in there and say let's just have patience. Uh, we got a big touchdown before halftime we can move the ball on them don't try to do too much too soon have patience don't turn it back over to them. Did that last minute drive prove you
you can come back in the second half. No doubt about it. I think that was a big, big drive for Edmonton. I think they got to have positive feeling right now. And, uh, you know, it's not going to take that much for them to get another one and get back in it if they don't turn the ball over. That's been the key to the first half, I think. Larry Donovan, if you're coaching the Argos, are you inclined to leave well enough alone as far as your offense goes, which moved the ball very well in the first half? Well, he started out with the run, uh, which I like very much the way that they mix the run and pass together. Then he went to pass for a while, came back with the combination again. Really looked great. I wouldn't change that. And you want to maintain pressure on Matt Dunnigan. The pressure's been great. It looks like they're leaving a linebacker uh, with his eye on whoever the quarterback might go and then tackle him coming out of the pocket. As impartial observers for a moment, switching from your game day coaches' roles, you are looking at a heck of a ball game, Mike, aren't you? I think it's a great game, and I think uh, it's kind of been for the Argos a classic game for them. They've let Edmonton drive a little bit, but they got some big turnovers, made big plays on defense, and their kicking game's been good. All right, thank you both. As our game day coaches, Mike Riley of the Bombers, Larry Donovan of the BC Lions. As we continue with halftime of the Grey Cup game, it's time now for a salute to 75 years Canada. of Grey Cup history. We welcome you today to an historic event, the 75th anniversary of the Grey Cup Championship in Canada. As we sit beneath the protective covering of Canada's first dome stadium, enjoying today's championship game, let's take a trip back in time to the year it all began, 1909. In 1909, Lord Earl Grey, the Governor General of Canada, donated a trophy to be awarded for the Rugby Football Championships of Canada. Canada was a land of only 7 million people. Sir Wilfrid Laurier was Prime Minister. Vancouver, a young city only 23 years old. A time when the news of the world traveled across this vast country only by radio. And a time when the fledgling game of football had been played continuously since the first clubs were founded in the late 1860s. Post, Canada's largest and most competitive courier network has joined forces with EMS, the world's most extensive courier network. The U.S., Europe, and beyond. It's all the same network. It's all the same consistent, proven reliability. Whether you ship inside Canada or out, Priority Post, EMS, Canada's world-class courier. That's why we'll come to you with our free mobile service backed with a Canada-wide guarantee. Standard Auto Glass. Hit us with your best shot. Fire away. Like a silent sentinel, it stands, proudly acknowledging achievements witnessed. Its 75-year legacy etched in silver, its tradition woven into the fabric of Canadian history. It is fitting that internationally acclaimed Canadian artist Ken Danby focus on the Grey Cup in his majestic painting, commissioned to celebrate the 75th anniversary. Expertly reproduced by lithography under the direct supervision of the artist, this limited edition tribute to the 75th Grey Cup is available on a subscription basis only. The price? Only $399 plus shipping and handling. To order your subscriber edition Ken Danby print, dial 1-800-387-0620. Major credit cards accepted. Ontario residents include 7% provincial sales tax. Operators are standing by and if busy, please try again. Heartbreaker to the Toronto Argonauts. 
Today, 1987, is the 75th anniversary of the Canadian Football League Championship game. Eight great teams, Toronto, Ottawa, Hamilton, Winnipeg, Saskatchewan, Edmonton, Calgary, and B.C. represent nearly eight decades of competition and pride. the country we bring you these special greetings from six people who share our pride on this historic day this year the Canadian Football League has provided some of the most exciting games that we've seen in decades and it's appropriate because it's also the 75th anniversary of the CFL and it is for that reason that on behalf of the government of Canada I'd like to take this opportunity to thank and congratulate the CFL for the continued entertainment excitement that they provide Canadian fans from coast to coast. Congratulations to the CFL on their 75th anniversary. Hi, I'm Ken Danby, and I would like to take this opportunity to wish the CFL a very happy 75th anniversary and many more successful seasons in the years ahead. Since 1909, Canada and its people have grown and grown up with the thrill of this game and the pursuit of that championship trophy from Lord Earl Grey, a tradition we owe to you, our Canadian fans. We now salute our country with animals symbolic of the many regions of Canada. To all our fans across the country, we say thank you, Canada. The truly national significance of this 75th Grey Cup championship game has been captured forever with the issuing of 15 million special edition postage stamps by Canada Post. We are proud to have Canada Post join us in leaving its special mark on the history of this great Canadian event. Vancouver in two minutes' time. We'll have more of our Grey Cup halftime show from BC Place in Vancouver in two minutes' time. Christmas shopping, stop in at Texaco. We have a gift for you. Free wrapping paper. Choose one of four lovely designs. Expect more from Texaco, including the clean gasoline. Copier companies, Mita only makes copiers. After all, we didn't get to be the fastest growing copier company by making microwaves. Mita, all we make are great copiers. A videotape that guarantees original brilliance and sharpness, even after 500 plays, this is the tape that does it. BASF. Because every time you play it, or play it again, or record over it, play after play after play, the original brilliance and sharpness always comes through. So if you're looking for the videotape that just keeps coming back for more, ask for BASF. Because play after play after play, the original brilliance always comes through. We're back at BC Place in Vancouver with more of our Grey Cup halftime show. The 75th Grey Cup stamp issued across Canada. 
And now joining us in the finale of our halftime celebration, please welcome some of our own Grey Cup heroes, our eight honorary team captains. Ron Stewart of the Ottawa Roughriders. Bill Simons from the Toronto Argonauts. Al Bruno of the Hamilton Tiger Cats. Frank Rigney from the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. George Reed, Saskatchewan Roughriders. John Helton, Calgary Stampeders. Jackie Parker, Edmonton Eskimos. And Al Wilson of the BC Lions. Also welcome Heidi and Howdy, the 1988 Calgary Olympic mascots. In tribute to them, the special Grey Cup song, Heroes, written and performed by Stan Foster. Yeah. 
75 years of tradition and history, bringing together fans from across Canada in a truly national celebration. Thank you all for being here, and we look ahead to another 75 years of excellence and excitement in pursuit of the championship of football in Canada, the Grey Cup. Some of the greats of the CFL remembered in the song Heroes and the videotape that accompanied the song, a visual confirmation that the CFL has done something right, also a visual confirmation of the CFL's great history. There may have been some plays in the first half of this Grey Cup game that will someday find their uh, way into a videotape of that nature. It has been an outstanding first half in the 75th Grey Cup game with the Argonauts leading the Eskimos by a converted touchdown, 24-17. Now let's get Don Whitman's and Ron Lancaster's thoughts on the first half. Well, Scott, in that first half, this game provided absolutely everything a football fan could hope for. And Henry the Gizmo Williams, Ron Lancaster, got it started with a brilliant 115-yard return on a missed field goal try. Yeah, the Argonauts move the football very well. Lance Chermick tries two field goals. The first one's wide. He runs it out about 25 yards. But, boy, when he kicked the second one in and missed it, Gizmo got it 112 yards away from the goal line, and the race was on, and it was downhill after that. I think they've officially charted it at 115 yards, and, of course, it is a record on a missed field goal try for Henry the Gizmo Williams of 115 yards. Well, he gets it, starts to his right. He cuts in down inside of Don Moan. Perone can't get him. Now the blocks start happening. A good block by Howard on Finity right here. Stuart Hill will make another one for him, and now the entourage there in front of him, and Stanley Blair is going to be the guy that makes the last one right here. He makes it. Now they're going to try to get Lance Chomick. Don Wilson's there, but I don't really believe that Lance Chomick could have run him down anyway. He's just got too much speed, and what a performance. Coming up a little bit later on a second down situation. We talked about Renfro getting set in the pocket. Look, he's set. He throws. He's got Fennerty one-on-one -on, -one on Larry Ruck. Should never be able to cover a guy like Fennerty, and that's what should be the result. 61-yard touchdown for Gil Fennerty. One of the interesting things, three turnovers in the game, and all three have led to touchdowns. The fumble by Matt Dunnigan when he's hit by Glenn Kalka, and Doug the Tank Landry heads for the end zone. Not too much difficulty in outlegging Hector Pache to Pater. No, when you saw Kalka's hand come in, that right arm batted it loose, and Pache has no chance on Landry. We said in the opening that Landry liked to run around and make things happen, and he has done that. Damon Allen or Matt Dunnigan in the second half? We don't know right now. Dunnigan was shaken up. And if Damon Allen does come in to start the second half, he may pose some different problems for the Toronto Argonauts defensively. Well, Matt Dunnigan likes to take it easy, throw the ball more. Damon Allen will run. At every opportunity, it's going to be a good one. Right now, let's go to Brian Williams, who is standing by with the Honorable Otto Jelinek. All right, Don Whitman, it has been a good football game. I think better than even you expected so far here today. Oh, no, the CFL has been providing a good product all year, and this is no surprise. It's one of the best uh, football games that we've seen all of North America. Last week on the university telecast, you said university football in this country has made great strides. If only the CFL could get its act together. What did you mean? I meant that not enough people go out to the games, not enough people watch it on television, even though it is a good product. And when I said they should get their act together, I think there's a need to improve their marketing. It's something like the political arena. You can do good stuff, have good stuff and people don't know about it. And I think uh, Doug Mitchell and his people are very aware of it and are moving in the right direction. I'll tell you one thing that will sell the Ladies Canadian Football League better than anything is a game like the fans across the country are seeing here today. Otto, can you open this up for us? Uh, Calgary is the next big event for our nation, the Winter Olympics. These are what, the official uh, coins? These are the commemorative coins. Uh, the government of Canada, through the Canadian Mint, is selling worldwide. In Canada, the Royal Banks and other uh, coin dealers. And the reason, one of the reasons that the Canadian tax taxpayer will not have to pay anything for the tremendous success in Calgary is because of the sale of these coins. Plus, some of the profit goes to the development of amateur athletes in Canada, so it's a heck of a program, and it's a great Christmas gift, too. Very quickly, as we talk about Calgary, wish you were competing there? Oh, I wish I could compete for Canada every day. It's All right. an honor. Otto Jelinek, our Federal Minister of Sport, enjoying this football game as we are. Right now, let's check in once again with Don Whitman for the first half statistics. Don? 
Well, Matt Dunnigan, Brian, is warming up at that Edmonton Eskimo bench. He went most of the way in the first half, but it was Damon Allen who engineered that late touchdown drive after Dunnigan was hurt when Glenn Coca fell on him. And on the other side of the field, Gilbert Renfro has gone all the way at quarterback, a 61-yard touchdown strike to Gil Fennerty. And then he engineered another drive following an interception that led to a four-yard touchdown run by Fennerty. Danny Barrett, the backup for this game. There was a lot of speculation earlier in the week whether it would be Barrett or John Congemi as the backup. Bob Obilovich felt that Danny Barrett would be his man. He felt he owed it to Barrett, and he also felt that Barrett would give the Argonauts a little different look if they got into trouble. He said he felt a little bit like a baseball manager trying to rotate his pitchers. He's got three pretty good quarterbacks. They're all young, and they can all play, and only two can, and that's a tough decision. Lissick's kickoff will go out of bounds. No opportunity for Tom Richards to return it, and quite wisely, I think Lissick is kicking it away from Henry the Gizmo Williams. They've tried. Illegal kickoff. Toronto number eight. They've tried lining uh, Richards and Stephen Jones. In this case, now it's Tom Richards, but they have Williams and him line up, pick a side, but wherever Gizmo goes, the ball's gone the other way. Well, I'm a little surprised to see Richards back there. Usually it's Stephen Jones. Now, prior to the game, we were down at the dressing room and saw Jones with a heavily taped leg. Perhaps he has an injury problem that most folks are unaware of. And in that first half, he may have further complicated the problem because he usually is back there to complement number two, the gizmo. Yeah, he's number two in the CFL, so you would expect him to be back there. And, you know, it's an, if he has an injury, we were never notified about it. And he's playing on offense, and I think if you have to make your choice, Tom Richards can do the special team, but get him out there on offense. Well, the Eskimos have reversed the positions of Richards and Williams. Williams has gone to the right side now, and that's the direction in which the kick is going to go. Williams, a buzz of anticipation through the crowd as he starts on the return, and he barrels up to the 45-yard line, stopped there by Selwyn Drain. He has that great acceleration. He just have to have, has to have that wee bit of a hole, and he's through it very quickly. Statistically, in the first half, the Argos, as the result of that very strong first quarter, have a big edge in time of possession, and of course they converted both turnovers into major scores. The Toronto Argonauts also gave up the ball once, and the Edmonton Eskimos responded with a touchdown of their own. Damon Allen completes the pass to Chris Johnston, a block screen that carries down to the 45. Don, you can talk about execution all you want, but this is about as well as you can do it. I think he fooled everybody in the house. He looked and looked to the left side. Watch Damon Allen. He's got three men to this side. Look at him look. He stopped. He takes a good look. Then when the rush just about gets there, he finds Chris Johnstone. And look at that. Bill Stevenson. He's only played about 13 years. He's out front leading the way. Big play to open the half. I like Hank Elissick. Bill Stevenson has six great cup rings. His first is 1975. Damon Allen pulls it down. Another screen. It was intended for Johnstone again, but he hit Leo Blanchard in the back. Well, you, you, you have to blame that on the receiver. He's got to let the lineman get in front of him. They can't block if they're behind him, but you can see him there setting it up, setting it up here. Now, they take off, and he gets too far in front of them, and he gets in the way of the throw. It's just too bad because it's set again for him. He had blockers. Second and 10. The ball is at the Toronto 45-yard line. We're in the third quarter. The Argos lead it by a score of 24-17. Damon Allen at the controls for the Edmonton Eskimos. <laughs> Kelly makes the catch down at the 20. Well, we talked about him in the pregame show that Brian Kelly will beat a defense if you give him time. And, you know, this is a big gamble on a quarterback's part because he threw into coverage 25-yard game for Kelly. But watch him. I thought for sure he was throwing it up close because Kelly had two people around him. Good hit by Glenn Kalka. But I'll tell you what, when you make the first down, they don't hurt nearly as much. A gain of 25 yards. Jake Vaughn and Selwyn Drain were back, but they couldn't prevent Brian Kelly from making the catch. And there have been a lot of people who haven't been able to stop Brian Kelly from making catches as those statistics 
will prove and uh, we have a penalty flag taking too long in putting the ball into play a time count violation I think against the Edmonton Eskimo time count violation Edmonton number nine I believe that's a crowd problem that time just wasn't anticipating well I think Allen tried to change the play at the line of scrimmage when he read the defense and the wide receivers couldn't hear the call and that's one of the difficulties teams have under the dome takes a while to get used to you know the Eskimos play here more than the Argonauts but when you get as many people that are in here today in a football game with that noise can find very difficult to hear great crowd though well the Eskimos this year have not won a football game in which they have trailed at halftime. They'd like to change that in this 1987 Grey Cup game. And Damon Allen will try and do it. He hits Stephen Jones. And Jones is limping as he heads back to that huddle. Limping quite a bit, too. So maybe he has got some problem with that hamstring muscle. You know, they get some, he gets a big catch for him, picks up about 10, 12 yards, but he's going to be three yards short reverse angle we're going to look at it throw to the wide side of the field Stephon Jones in front of Reggie Pleasant makes the catch can't get that foot planted of course he was the big star in the victory over the BC Lions a week ago Dave Daniels was blitzing from his halfback position and he stopped Chris Johnstone right on his tracks well, that's what you call guessing right. He guessed the snap count. Dave Daniels hit it on the run, and he's into the backfield before they have a chance. Watch, Johnstone gets the ball, but look who's there waiting on him. He had no chance at all to go anywhere with that one. That is good defense. A little bit lucky, but it's good defense. So it will be a field goal attempt by Jerry Cowrick from 22 yards out. I count too many guys in there on the field and there's a penalty flag and the man down on the turf writhing in pain is Doug Landry and it appears as though a hamstring may have tightened up on him and Glenn Coca also has an injury problem and neither one of them are hurt they have 13 men on the field <laughs> Dan Perone and they were down here hollering at him to get somebody off the field and when they realized he shouldn't be in there two of them went down but hey they're going to get get away with it it's just too bad but they weren't hurt but I counted them up I hit 13 because the Argonaut bench was going crazy so I counted and got the 13 there's still 13 out there if you want to count them I thought they belonged to the Players Association not the Actors Guild <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and one in the end zone. Twelve. They're okay now. One went in, two came out. Well, Jerry Cowrick will be trying the field goal now from 22 yards out. Kick is up, and it is good. So the Eskimos slice into that Toronto Argonaut advantage with 11:47 remaining in the third quarter. Around here, they know my name. Time to talk, time to say hello. Around here, we're all in the game. Hometown heroes, let them out, let them go. And a few around here is home Great taste, my friend. You know a few around here is home Around here, our Greb Kodiak, built to take abuse. Waterproof, comfortable, warm, and tough. There are cheaper lookalikes, but Greb Kodiak set the ground rules for quality footwear. That's why, after 75 years, Greb Originals are still the best-selling work boot in Canada. Ah, Greb Kodiak. You simply can't buy better. Secret Agent 37 just got his ESSA Top Secret Savings Book, and he's determined to solve the mystery of the six secret coupons. Every coupon will save him up to $10 on ESSO No Trouble Gasoline for winter, or there are Buick Regals to be won, not to mention ESSO gift certificates worth up to $1,000. But no matter how hard he tries, he'll never be able to reveal his hidden prizes. 
because only your participating SO retailer has the top secret pen to do that. Ronnie Lancaster was right. The Argos had too many men on the field. They had 13, so they were ordering two men to go down. They went down, and they weren't penalized for it. A stroke of genius. Scott? Steve, the Eskimos' decision not to start Matt Dunnigan in the second half was not medical. He's been cleared to play, but the Eskimo coaches have elected to stay with Damon Allen, who has momentum going for him right now. Don? Well, that's one of the intangibles that Ron Lancaster talked about prior to the game, the shift of momentum and how one individual could get it going for his respective squad. Wright Edwards is trying to do it for the Toronto Argonauts as he returns it to the 42-yard line, a 20-yard run back. He's brought down by Chris Johnstone. Gilbert Renfro had hopes this year of being the starting quarterback for the Ottawa Rough Riders. During training camp, he says he became aware that he was going to become expendable. He was more than pleased to land with the Toronto Argonauts. Suffered an injury midway through the season that sidelined him for about six weeks. But there was no question in Bob Obinovich's mind that he was going to be the number one man. And out of the arms of Gene Thomas. That was a catchable ball. Boy, he drilled it, didn't he? He looked to his left and he came back, and Thomas ran a curl to the inside, and it, it had eyes. I mean, it went over top the linebackers and into the hole, and as you say, very catchable. Well, Thomas is still down. One of the reasons he may not have been able to hang on to that football is he tried to make the cut to catch the ball. He may have injured himself. You can see it just over top the linebackers. They jump. It hits him right in the chest, but he's unable to hang on to the ball. Unfortunate it wasn't intercepted. Thomas is having some difficulty putting any weight on his leg. the time remaining in the third quarter and a reminder that the awards party of the year the 1987 Gemini Awards honoring television's best will come your way Wednesday December 9th consider yourself invited well Thomas is now up and uh, walking off to that Toronto bench and we'll probably see him back in the lineup. So Dwight Edwards has gone into the wideout position, located by Gene Thomas as a result of that injury. Second and ten. Throwing deep for Darrell Smith. He can't catch up with it. A strong throwing arm. Renfro can fire that ball a mile. And a nice throwing motion. He just stepped. Threw the ball normal, didn't put anything extra on it, and it was a straight deep pattern from the word go. Daryl Smith just took off upfield. Renfro was going to try to lay it to him, but it got too far. Henry Williams back to the 20-yard line. The crowd anticipating another big return by the Gizmo. Hank Elisic had his last punt attempt blocked by Stanley Blair. Blair trying to come from the outside again, but this time, Melissa gets the kick away. Williams fields it at the 20. He has to reverse his field. And is brought down at the 20-yard line by Jake Vaughn. A three-yard run back, and he ran a long way to get those three yards after a 52-yard kick by Alyssa. He should be tired. Three yards, but he must have run 150. And there is also a penalty call against the Argos' Jake Vaughn, a face mask violation in making the tackle on Henry Williams. The Eskimos had the most potent offense in the CFL, establishing two records this year for points and touchdowns. And they now have it first and 10 at their own 37-yard line with 10-18 remaining in the third quarter. And they trail by a score of 24 to 20. Damon Allen continues at quarterback. He fumbles the football, gets it back. 
Book an attempt to throw. Sellers and Polka are there to bring him down, and Quest was standing guard. Well, Damon Allen just coming out from behind center. Here he comes. Comes to his left. Looks like he hit the elbow of Blake Marshall, and the ball bounces free. Very fortunate it bounced back in his hands, and he does another wise thing. Just hang on to it. Take the loss, and let's play another down. Well, it looked as though he was trying, as you said, to fake the handoff to Marshall. Hit Marshall with the ball and had it bounce away from him. And now it is second and 27 back at the 22-yard line. Draw play with Nelson Jones. And Jones gets it out to the 27-yard line where Don Moon is there to make the tackle. Marco Sincar, who scored that touchdown late in the first half for the Eskimos on the pass from Damon Allen, is being treated at that Edmonton Eskimo bench. Working on his calf muscles. They may have tightened up. Got a couple of cramps. Pretty warm in here today. It was cold all week watching practice, but it's pretty warm in here today. And, of course, it is warm outside. The sun's shining here on the West Coast. Third down kick by Jerry Cowrick, and Darnell Class goes back to his own 38-yard line. And then he's taken out of bounds by Blake Marshall, who excels on those special teams for the Edmonton Eskimos. 8.54 is the time remaining in the third quarter. 